Well, hi there, food friends. Welcome to Cavalcade of Food. I'm Kevin. Hi, Kevin. I'm Ralph behind the camera, and we're in that time between holidays. Hope you're enjoying uh, a safe and happy and warm holiday season. And that it was filled with joy and love and good health and surrounded by good food with family and friends. That's well, what we're doing. We hope all our friends watching are enjoying the time between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah, and we have a little shindig that we're getting ready for tonight. And me and my sister were talking and we thought that one thing that we really wanted to do was recreate a coffee cake, Ralph, that my mom used to make when we were kids. So was this a traditional holiday thing? I think she made it about every Christmas. Okay. Uh, or like between Christmas and New Year's, she'd make these coffee cakes and they were in the classic kind of Polish flavors. She'd make one almond, prune, poppy seed, kielbasa. Apri <laughs> no, she, she didn't make a kielbasa uh, coffee cake, but there was kielbasa was on the side. So anyways, we took a vote. We said, you know what, we're going to make an almond coffee cake like uh, like mom used to make. And so that's what we're doing. These, this is a kind of a sweet, yeasty um, coffee cake. And what we're going to start with is some milk that I've scalded. Okay. Not scolded. Not scolded. Bad milk. Good milk. So, so no, scalded means you just see those little bubbles around the edge. Okay, so it's almost to the point of boiling. Right, or? but not quite. But not quite there. So, we got a half a cup of of milk that we scalded. So we just brought it up to a warm temperature. It's when you see the bubbles start to form around mm. the edge. And that's um, whole milk, I assume. This is whole milk. You could use 2%. Don't use skim. I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of just regular salt. Do you think you could use soy milk, which is so popular now? Mm, I don't think so, because it doesn't have the fat so in it. So the fat's a uh, key ingredient in this. Okay. Now we got a half a cup of sugar. Okay. Okay. And I've got a half stick or one quarter cup of margarine. So what I'm going to do here, Ralph, is we're going to just stir that in, okay? You kind of let it all melt together, especially kind of get that sugar dissolved. So the, the the milk being still warm is doing its thing and helping dissolve the butter and, or and the, the margarine? Sh yep, the, it's dissolving the, the sugar and the salt and the margarine. And we're going to let this, we actually need to let the milk cool also, okay, to like just lukewarm, because now it's kind of on the hot side. Okay. So. And you can help the margarine along by kind of breaking it up with the spatula. Yeah, exactly. I could have put it in in little pieces, maybe it would have melted um, sooner, but it will. It will melt on its own. It'll do its thing, okay. So in the meantime, I'm going to warm up a half a cup of water in the microwave here. Um because this is going to be to get our yeast going, okay. kind of get the yeast um, blossomed up in some warm water. You want the water like not not hot, but no more than 115 degrees, 110 degrees, something in that range. If the water is too hot, it'll kill the yeast. Okay. If it's too cold, it won't really activate the yeast. So you're gonna have to kind of get it in that certain region and we'll use the thermometer okay i was going to ask how yeah, to so get we'll know. okay so we'll be right back we're making traditional polish seasonal coffee cake yeah okay so this is cooled off uh this was our milk sugar salt and margarine okay remember ralph yeah you got that uh, nice and dissolved so here i've got a half a cup of very warm water and you tested the temperature with a thermometer i'm putting in two packets of dry yeast okay and let me uh, get a little thing and stir that around a little bit okay so we'll just oh you can smell it can you smell the yeast? Oh, is that wonderful? Oh, yeah, all of a sudden it's coming mm -hmm. right this way. So we want to dissolve the yeast. It smells like a bread factory. Yeah, doesn't it? A little bit. Okay. So then we're going to add our milk mixture to this, okay? Okay. So that's 
Once every once all the yeast is nicely dissolved in there. Yep. And you take. And we're going to take our our milk and margarine and sugar, margarine and, salt. sugar and salt. We're going to add that to here. It's okay if it looks a little clumpy. Yeah. You get all that in there. What is it? <laughs> so. Making yeast bread, a lot of people, you know, kind of get a little nervous about it, but it's actually not that bad. That's Once so you kind of get used to it. Yeah, okay. Oh, I've got two beaten eggs here. Um, that's right. We're going to put that in. Okay. Okay, so two eggs added to the yeast and the milk. So you got yeast, water, <clears throat> milk, margarine, sugar, salt, eggs. Now, we got to start working in the flour. Okay, so we're going to start with three cups. Let me get my flour out here. Okay, so we're going to put in three cups of flour. Now, we'll add more flour, but for right now, we're going to start with three cups. Okay, you don't have to do any fancy sifting. It doesn't or... have to be sifted, no. Just this, and this is just regular all-purpose flour. One, two... Three. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And does that get whisked with a whisker? We're going to stir this around. <clears throat> I have my mixer just in case. Okay. So let me get this mixed in. And then we'll come back. And it'll be sort of a loose, you can see it's going to be sort of a loose dough. We will be adding more flour. But let me just get this stirred up. Okay, Ralph, so we have started with three cups of flour, mm -hmm. and now I've added another cup and a half of flour to the dough, and I'm just mixing it all in so here. You just patiently mix it by hand. Yep. Now, if you had a big stand mixer, which I have, and I didn't feel like hauling out with a dough hook, you could do that. Oh, okay. But we're doing it old school today. Yeah. I actually like the feel of the dough. Mm-hmm in my hands because it really kind of helps you know where the dough's at in terms of its texture. And it really connects you to the end product. It does. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm working in this last, so this last cup and a half of flour. So I would say all told we probably have about uh, four and a half, five, about five cups of flour total. Okay. Now you make it sound like it could vary. It could vary. I mean, a lot depends on um, the climate with with dough. Okay. okay. So you don't necessarily have to be super precise with that amount. Right. Okay. You know, it's usually depends on how much dough you just so do you or go flour by, you need do to. You go more by the texture and the feel and the mm -hmm. consistency. Oh, yes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, now that I have the dough kind of where I want it, we're going to knead it. Right there on the counter? So, yeah, I'm actually going to use my, let me use my board for this. Okay. Bring that. Usually you put a little flour on, I've learned. That's just what we're going to do. And we do that so that the dough doesn't stick, right? Right. Now we're going to knead. Now we've done a bread episode where we kneaded, and the purpose of kneading is to kind of activate the uh, glutens in the flour, okay? And hey, I thought this was gluten free. <laughs> Just well, kidding. this one's not. No, but, but yeah, you've you've shown us how to knead uh, bread dough, and also uh, don't you do that when you're making pie dough? Mm -hmm. And you want a certain elasticity so the kneading does a couple of things it, it helps uh, the pliability and it also activates the, the the ingredients in the dough itself yeah we want to get this nice and smooth and almost kind of satiny okay see so and that will that will happen with uh, now can folks add a little drop of water if they find it's getting too too tough or is that how you want it is to be not tough but you know um, it needs to be a little firm yeah it should be firm okay yeah yeah Adding water really is not a good idea. No, at this point. not okay. at this stage. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so I'm just gonna need this for maybe another five minutes or so, 
and then it'll be ready for its first rise okay and we're gonna put it in a warm place cover it and let it rise okay so we'll be right sounds back. like you're getting a workout what are you doing now so I'm just buttering up the inside of this bowl here so what you can do is just take a little bit of butter or margarine and grease the inside of a large bowl okay this is the what we're gonna let the um, dough rise in now here's our dough that we've kneaded so you've gotten it to a nice clumpy roundish shape yeah and I'm turning it over a couple times in the bowl so that it gets a little butter on it, it gets a little right all over okay now we've got to uh, put it in a warm draft free place and so what I did is I turned the oven on to the lowest setting which is like 175 once it got up to temperature I shut the oven off and there's just that residual heat that's inside the oven and that's what you want that's what you want I'm going to take a little towel here a little tea towel so you don't have to make it airtight or anything nope. and we're just going to put this in there Bye for now and it's going to double in size okay so it'll probably take about an hour all right so we'll come out when we get things cleaned up here and of course we've got a million other things to do to get ready for the party so while that's doubling up in the oven um we like to clean as we go that's right we'll get the kitchen in order our dough's been resting and rising for an hour so let's see what we got ralph see that good so now I'm gonna punch this down and what does that do well it kind of how you make a punch takes, <laughs> no but it takes you know it takes some of the air out I'm gonna cut this in half because this actually makes two cakes So you just punch the dough for a little bit, then you can cut it into two. Right, and now we're going to roll it out. On a cloth? Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little flour down here. Okay, on our pastry cloth. Then we got to roll these out into like a rectangular shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we're gonna, we're gonna work this. Now the dough is, you know, fairly elasticy, so we gotta really kinda press it down. Yep. Kevin's got a strong back and a weak mind. <laughs> You should see it likes to spring back, but yeah. you just got to keep working it's it. fighting you. Yeah, you just got to keep working it. It doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle, okay, but it's going to, so we're going to do this, I'm going to keep doing this, and then we're going to do the other one, and I'm going to put them, each one on a baking sheet with uh, parchment on it. Okay. Okay. Now it's starting to look like a rectangle. There we go. I was going to say that's more of an oblong, but I'm getting the idea. I said, just, just got to work with it. Idea is basically How's to that? stretch it out yep. and more rectangle than round. Okay, so there's one. Gotcha. Okay. And then we'll, I'll do the other one, but let me show you what we're going to do here. So, see our filling? This is our almond filling. Now you could make your own if you wanted to, but if you find uh, 
if you find some filling that you really like, why, uh, why go through all the fuss? So I'm going to use about half the can. That sure smells good too, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. Now what you want to do is you don't want to go to the edge. Okay, we want to just take it. Kind of more in the center. Mm-hmm. Because what we're going to do with these coffee cakes is we're going to make kind of what they refer to as a braid. Huh. I'm curious to see what happens next. It's not going to be like a jelly roll? No, although you could do that if you wanted to. Okay. So now we'll take a pair of kitchen scissors, if I can get to them. Here they are. Then look what we're going to do, Ralph. Starting here, we're going to put little snips in the dough. Oh, it's like an arts and crafts project. Exactly right. Okay. They don't have to be perfectly even, but I'm trying to do it about an inch, apart. maybe apart. Okay. Now we'll so do the other side. Very interesting. Okay, so now we're going to take, look, and go this way, this way, this way, this way. So you, you connect, with me? connect the sides that you've just cut. Right, that way, and like so. See how we're doing this? Yeah. Isn't that pretty? It's very pretty. And then that sort of gives this sort of braided effect. Wow. And then we'll take the end here and just do like this. Looks like a fish. Yeah, here. Let me tuck that in, make that a little neater. It does kind of look like a fish. So you can get doesn't very it? creative with it, I imagine. Absolutely. Do different things that appeal to you, shape okay. wise. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Okay. And then we'll come back and pop them in the oven? Well, no, they have to rise again. Oh, okay. Okay? So on its second rise, it will sort of rise in its shape. All right. All right? So, so we'll let me roll out the other one. Now. Yep. And I'll start rolling this dough out. So. This is the. This is the second rise. Oh, okay. Of our coffee cakes. So they've been rising for an hour. How about that? Like the south, they rose again. <laughs> Aren't they pretty? So, now, we've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees, and we're going to put these in here for about 20 minutes, give or take. Probably more give. We'll see how they do. We'll just kind of uh, check them out. Yeah. And then once they're done, we'll bring them out, we'll let them cool, there it is. Look well, at them. Those browned up nicely, didn't, didn't they? they? Beautiful. So, yeah, very. We were talking about the smell in the kitchen, and it's so very nostalgic us of um, when Mom used to bake these. Yeah, it's a very distinct almondy and sweet and warm smell, isn't it? Yeah, I'm uh, gonna make the glaze for them, Ralph, and so. You, this is almond extract. You don't have to use this. I'm going to put a little bit, maybe a half a teaspoon in this powdered sugar here. That just kind of ups the almond flavor. And then I've got a cup of powdered sugar in here. And I'm going to start with about a tablespoon of milk. And we'll just sort of mix this around. We want to make a nice icing to go on top of these cakes, these coffee cakes. So, so you just blend it and keep it kind of wet. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you make an icing like this, you kind of just have to, you can always put in more liquid. You can't take liquid out. So 
if uh, so you have to be careful not to make it too wet right exactly we don't want to make it too loose I'm going to put just another drop in here of course you could if you did you could always add more powdered sugar um, to tighten it back up again but there we go so there's our icing there's our nice almond wow does that smell good icing yeah you can smell the almond extract in mm -hmm. it can't you yes so so then you just brush it on the whole thing and yep so what i'm going to do now is let's see if i can find a little pastry brush here and while the cake is warm we're going to put our icing on here. So you kind of like let it fall on and... Yeah, and it would go in kind of the cracks so and crevices. So you don't have to be too careful or precise. No. You just want to get it on there. Get to, get artistic. Is this and how your mom would do it? I don't remember how she actually used to ice the cakes. I don't know. She probably just used a knife. Mom was not fancy. You know, she just used whatever she had on hand. I like but, how it's dripping down the sides. Yeah. And then, of course, as everything cools, the icing will harden up, too. But this will just give it another touch of sweetness. Won't this be good to have with some coffee today? Won't it? So, anyways, this is our holiday almond coffee cake. Traditional Polish style. And boy, I can't tell you how good this thing smells. So we had a great time doing this because it really brought back wonderful memories and reminds us that our mom is always here in the kitchen with us when we're cooking. And we just had a great time doing this. And we hope you had a great time being with us. We hope everyone has a happy new year and we hope you had a ding dong dandy Christmas. <laughs> Yep. Happy New Year, everybody. We'll see you next time. Adios. Bye.